M0 FXB, welcome back to the channel Euronode made by DV Mega. So if you've got one of these, you can actually run WPSD on it. So what is WPSD? So we're all familiar with the Pi Star system, as you can see here. Let me show you WPSD. So this is what the dashboard looks like. And on the right hand side, just here, you can see my Euro node, but you can, you know, you can use this system with most MMDVM hotspots. And this system runs uh, using the, at the moment, using the Pi Star system. But we're gonna install WPSD made by W0CHP. So first thing is take out the SD card from your device, which just comes out just here and then pop it into an adapter, and it's quite fiddly, an adapter on your PC and, for, and well, I would actually make a new card if it was me, but format it and I would keep the original somewhere spare in case you want to change back to the Pi Star system. This is the adapter that I use and just pop it into your PC ready for a program that we use to write the image of WPSD onto this SD card and we use Bolina Etcher. And of course, if you want to install this as per instructions of WPSD, then follow their website. And I will provide a link to that here in the description. So this is just me doing it. I'm not the expert on this. I'm just a novice who is learning how to use this system. So I just plugged that blank SD card into my PC. And if I just go SD like so, my SD card formatter comes up, I click yes, and I'm gonna format that, that SD card and just make sure that it's completely blank. So there we go, format, yes. Completely blank, blank. Then I go to the WPSD download. And by the way, this is the Bellina download. Click download there and you'll end up with a program that looks like this, just here on the left, which we'll be using shortly. All links will be in the description. I notice there's a couple of links here and one supports Raspberry Pi 5 on the right here. And on the left, we've got the Bullseye operating system as well. So I'm just gonna use the one on the left for now. Then I'm gonna scroll down to the device that I've got, which is the Euro node, WPSD Euro node. And note, note that there are many other systems here, but Euro node is the one that we're gonna do. And we're gonna click that and that should download the image up here. Now you can't just swipe that image onto an SD card, you do have to burn it onto your device uh, using Bellina Etcher and I suppose there is things like Win32 and Rufus. So while that's downloading, let's get the image, the, the config file for loading our Wi-Fi. Here it is here, because we're gonna need this file. So it's the WPSD Wi-Fi configuration generator. So I'm gonna put in my home router number like so, Mercury 10 GHZ, and my password, uh, which I'm not gonna show you, and it will generate a file that we're gonna eventually swipe onto our SD card, and then at least that will be ready. We'll choose our country, call long list. Okay, United Kingdom, there we are. And I'll put the password in now, and then I'll click generate file. So I click generate file and there it is there and then download the file and it will be saved in your downloads. And you can see it's there just in my downloads there. Okay, let's open Bellina Etcher. Be, hey, just put that in our search, Bellina. We've already formatted the card, the SD card. Mine is a 16 GB card. Click flash from file on the left and we're gonna find our WPSD download, the image that we've downloaded then the select target, that is our SD card, select and it will find it here and click select and then flash here. And that's gonna run all the way across. First of all, it'd be like a purple line and then it will be, it will go green when it goes into validation mode. Okay, done. 
And then we'll get that. You'll get some error messages, but just I ignore them. But it says flash completed just there on the right hand side. We're just going to put the WPSD, the, the Wi Fi config file into the card. So what I do is unplug it and plug it back into my PC. You get this error, which I always ignore. And find that download. So I just put, open up a new window for File Explorer. Move it over, go to download. There's the WPA that we made earlier. And just swipe that in. And it's just there at the bottom. Now you can like right click and go eject and then grab the SD card and pop it into your device. Okay, so we'll get it and we'll pop it in like so. It only goes in one way round. So that's in and then we'll power this up. I've got one of these magnetic things that I connect to it. You can buy them for a few pounds. You get it's basically a USB lead with a magnet. Plug one end in there and the other end there like a magnet look. And then we'll just watch that boot up. Take a, a minute or so. Okay, so I decided to plug in the Ethernet to my device. Remember, I am not giving instructions here. I'm just doing this myself. Use the instructions from WPSD and DV Mega. Uh, this is just Andreas tinkering at home. So anyway, I've plugged it into the Wi-Fi, rebooted it, and it's come up with an IP address ending in, by the looks of it, call my eyesight is 108. So I'm gonna type that in, just here, new window. I'm going to go 192.168.0.108, enter. And there you are. These are the colors that it's booted up with by default. So I'm now going to click admin, PyStar Raspberry login. And let's start putting in our details. So we've got the configuration page here. Click that. And then I'm going to have my call sign and my DMR number. So it's M0FXB. I'm going to make any oh, it's found it by putting in my call sign. It's found my details straight away. This is all part of the new things that you get, you know, with the with this system. The sort of additional features. And it should know most items. Just scrolling down, might need to get my Brownmeister password in there. Screen type, I'm not going to change that. Uh, I keep going down until I see where I can put my pa uh, Here's where we can set our username. Remote access password. Mm, not going to do that now. And okay, apply that for now. I think I'll I think I'll go for a testing it with DMR. So we'll turn still in configuration. We're going to turn off YSF, turn on DMR, and then apply. I'll grab my, my DMR radio and turn it up as well. Put it next to the hotspot. I set it on Talk Group ninety one. And then we'll have to put in the frequency as well to make sure they match. Let's have a look here. There's our frequency. So it's 431.550. You can use this as a duplex hotspot if you want to. But I'm, this is a simplex node. Okay, let's apply that. So we're edging to the right place so we can start receiving some audio. Now we're going to scroll down. We're going to choose Brandmeister UK, which is 2341. And then we're going to put in our password here. 
I'll show you where to go to set that up. I'm just going to put mine in now and then we'll show you. This is a very important part of the process. Brandmaster UK, I'm just going to click apply. Surprise is not already at saying apply because I've made a change. Maybe it already knew it. That would be pretty cool. So go to Brandmeister, then click here where my call sign is and click self care. Scroll down and just put in hotspot security here. Put a password in here, just here, and then click save. I've already done mine. Okay. Each time you apply, you get these messages here. Looks like you can choose a APRS symbol there. You can enable the APRS gateway. Of course, you've got all these modes, including M17 with the right update. Your hat needs to be updated uh, to the latest or the correct firmware to use M17. I'm not sure if M17 works on the Euro node though. I'll look that one up. Okay, let's go back to my brand master. What I like to do is click where it says my device. I like this to be in green here. And it's not in green at the moment. Back to the dashboard. We're going to go to the update. We go admin. And then we're going to look for update. Why not? I'm just going to click it, let it update everything. Any tips from you guys is appreciated. Looks busy. New version. Quite cool watching it all, isn't it? Updating host files. ID database, talk group lists. After the update, it's gone green now, look, here. I usually add 91 here, so when you click your device, then my devices, when you click that, you can add your favorite talk groups down to static talk groups. So I tend to put in 91 and I put in CQ UK as well, two, three, five, one, and sometimes Hubnet, which is two, three, five, two, six, send it across. And then what will happen is when your hotspot is not busy, when you're not changing things, it will just eventually just listen for those. That's, that's my experience of using this system. Uh, it's performing maintenance tasks at the moment. So we're at the dashboard, just gonna key up. M0 FXB test test. Let's see if we've got the right frequencies there. The dashboard is starting to populate. And if I go back to admin, then config, scroll down, and the Wi Fi, remember I added the Wi Fi earlier? Well, it did work. Look, there it is there. It's got my, uh, my Wi Fi connected, which is quite nice. And I can use that IP address ending in seven now. So let's try that. As the cable is still connected, well, I'll unplug the cable now. Let's unplug the cable. That's us on Wi-Fi now. You can see my call sign is here at the top. Click the live caller and you get this cool sort of dashboard look. See that there? And we'll go here, just click main dashboard. You're back to the usual. So okay, that's enough for now. We'll do some more tests later. Bye for now, 7-3, all the best.